Hey guys, Scott Devine here from scottsbassessions.com and today we're going to be talking about something that Joe Dart does and Pino Palladino does. I'm going to be showing you some very specific examples of him doing that and the reason why I want to talk about this is because today we're talking about how people can play fast on bass. We're talking about speed. Because we all want to play those fast lines. Okay, we all want to just like rip into those cool riffs and those cool licks and those cool lines. But there's so many of us that are just having issues with our technique, you know, giving us the ability to do that. So we've got three things that we're going to be looking at today. First of all, we're going to have a must-have number one. This is the one that Joe Dart and Pino Palladino have got nailed, as well as a lot of other players. We're going to be seeing them doing that. Then there's the must-have number two. Okay, These are the key things that we must have to be able to play any kind of lines at speed on the bass. And then we're going to have a must-do number three. And this is a really killer exercise. It's super simple to start implementing, and it's going to give you a ton of results really fast okay now before i go any further i just want to let you know that my brand new program the eight week practice accelerator for bass players like you is open right now for enrollment if you want to check that out the link is below but wait just check out this first and i'll tell you a bit more about it at the end of this video now without further ado let's get on with this lesson so i can get you burning on the bass must have number one is we must have our fretting hand together okay if we've got any real big problems with our fretting hand over here, it's really going to make it impossible to play any lines at any great speed, right? And the main thing, if I had to point out one main culprit with fretting hands, it is this wrist here, that people took it up instead of having it down. And what happens is, if you put your hand in front of you like this, right? So I'm gonna do it sideways so you can see this. I want it, this, part of the palm here, I want you to push it up towards the ceiling, but keep the knuckles here at the same level. So I want you to push your palm up towards your hand, like that, right? And what happens is all of these fingers just get sucked together. And it is impossible for me to have any kind of spread on the bass. And that spread, that reach when we're playing, fast lines, really really important because it gives us the ability to move around fluidly on the bass. Now just to give you an example of this I'm going to cut over to the computer I'm going to show you Pino Palladino and Joe Dart from Volpec doing the same thing. So check this out this is Pino Palladino playing with John Mayer and before I even press start check this wrist out here see it's not all tucked up in here it's nice and out here because he wants the separation and the stretch between the fingers. It's going to give him the ability to do what he wants. Check it out. There we go, as well, that lick there. Check that lick out again. Here we go. And again, look, he's right in the middle of that lick. That wrist is down here. You can see there that the wrist is down. Now check this out, same thing with Joe, right? And what this is Dean Town, I think we all know Dean Town, killer, killer um, tune. Now what's interesting about Joe is that he goes between the two. So what he'll do is, if there's a complex line, and you'll see this in a minute, he'll open his fingers up like this and the wrist will come down. As the line gets a little easier to play, what this, the wrist will tuck up, and you'll see his wrist going down and up, depending on what is needed within the line. So check this out. See that there? And again, it's up, isn't it? So now it's tucked up. Watch it come down. Here we go. So that is down there, and it's about to go up a little bit. Here we go. See, it's getting tucked up there. There's just a happy man. <laughs> see what I mean? It's really easy to see that it's such a key part of their playing. And it's that technique that gives them the ability to play those types of lines. Now to get this into your own playing, just hold the bass, make sure you've got it a decent height or hopefully you're sitting down when you practice. Hold the neck in that bass, you know, that baseball kind of grip where you're gripping the neck here. And then just get this rip part of the wrist and drop it down so the thumb is on the back of the neck. And you're gonna have this nice curve here 
and more importantly, this little peephole down here. Peephole. <laughs> Evening. Now, when you've got that, you should be able to get a little more you know, a little, little bit more stretch with that left hand, which is gonna give you a lot more fluidity when moving around the neck. Now, number two, must have number two, is your plucking hand. You've gotta have your plucking hand together. If you think about it, these are kind of like two separate entities and we need to get these working together. We've talked about the fretting hand, but the plucking hand is equally as important, but really ignored so much of the time from bass players, okay? What you absolutely need to have down to get any type of speed in your playing is really great alter alternate picking, moving up, ascending. Okay, so when you're moving up the bass, it's got to be I am, I am, I am, index, middle, index, middle. None of this index, index, middle, middle, index, middle, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it needs to be dialed in so you can just. You can just dial it in when you need it, okay? And when you're descending, you need to either alternate all the way, I am, I am, I am, I am, or do what I call economy picking where I'm using, I'm doubling up on the index finger or the middle finger, depending on how I'm moving down. So if I'm going down a major scale like this, I can play index, index, middle, index, index, middle, index, middle. So every time I move across a string, I'm using the same finger as I move across. And I can do the same with the middle finger as well. Middle, middle, index, middle, middle, index, middle, middle, index. So if you hear any of those guys that are playing like these types of lines, okay, where they're doing those fast, those types of lines, most of the time they are using economy picking within their right hand. And also, on top of getting the, the economy and the alternate plucking down in the plucking hand, a really great exercise is to get the independence exercises together as well. So your index and your middle finger are equally independent. Like you would on a snare drum as a drummer, you wouldn't have one hand that was like way more um, controlled than the other hand. Drummers do this all the time, we should do the same as bass players. So just pick one note, okay, that's F on the A string, and just play to start with triplets. One, two, three, one, two, three. And what I'm doing there is index, middle, index, middle. I'm accenting different ones, okay? Index, middle, index, middle. Okay, just like you would on a snare drum. Then you can do fours. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Fives, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And although it's not directly a speed exercise, Having the ability and getting the control of these fingers on the plucking hand is going to be a real key thing to build in that speed, okay? Now, on to number three, okay? The must-do exercise. The must-do exercise is what I call speed bursts. Speed bursts. And speed bursts is where you take a major scale, or any scale, but in our case, we'll take the major scale. Let's take a major C major scale, okay? And what I want you to do is play three notes a string. So I actually want you to start the C major scale, but on the B here, okay? So B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, okay? And fingers, if you wanted to put numbers to the fingers, it'd be one, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four. Now, when you're playing a fast line, the problem areas are going to be when you're crossing the strings. It's not going to be, if you pick up your bass right now, okay, or if you've got it in your hands, you probably able to play those three notes at that tempo. But can you play the whole thing at that tempo? That was the same tempo as this. Whole thing. So why can you play three notes and not the whole thing, right? The reason is, it's because crossing over the strings is throwing up a ton of 
issues for your technique and your technique's crumbling and you are ending up a bit of a, a technique mess, right? A whole hot mess. So how do we do this? We just add a note each time and we let our technique get used to adding that note, okay? We'll start with three notes. Now go on to four notes. One, two, three, four. Let's bring the tempo down a little bit. Now that probably feels okay, but when you add in the fifth note, the, that F, now we're like properly on the A string. Now we add in another note, six notes. Now we add in seven notes. Eight notes. Now, as I'm doing this, obviously I've done that over a minute, right? You should be doing this over days or weeks, being able to play five notes really smoothly at a certain speed. Then you add in that sixth note. And if your technique starts to fall to bits, then you start analyzing, why is it falling to bits? Is, is it my thumb? That's, is it my muting technique? Is it my left hand? Like, what is it specifically that's falling off that's making it hard for you? Because everybody's different. So you can watch as many YouTube videos as you want to, and it's not gonna solve this specific problem. Only you can solve this, this specific problem, okay? So get out, get your bass, okay? Start working on this, start with three notes, then four notes, then five, three notes, four notes, three notes, four notes, five notes, and go through that sequence, adding in a note every few days when you feel it's the right time for you, and keep analyzing your left hand, your right hand, and when you start, say for instance, you can play one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that seventh note is a real issue, then, okay, stick with that for a while. Maybe it's gonna take you a week or two to be able to play seven notes at that tempo, right? Does that sound cool? Is that a deal? Have we got it on? Gav, is it a deal? Gav does this stuff at home, you see. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this lesson. Now, I said at the beginning of this video that I was gonna tell you about my eight-week practice accelerator program. It is open right now and it closes enrollment this coming Sunday. If you're watching, it depends when you're watching this. It might be already closed. If it is closed, I'll make sure there is a wait list available so you can put your name down and you'll get notified next time we reopen for enrollment. In a nutshell, it tells you all about how to, how to organize your practice, right? Because for the most part, we wander into our practice rooms and we're like, hey, you know, we wanna get better and we've got a container of time Let's say that's our container of time. And let's say that's 45 minutes, okay? We've got four, ooh, 45 minutes to practice today, okay? Well, most people, most students wander into that 45 minutes and they pick up their base and they think, hmm, what should I practice today to get to the next level? It doesn't work like that, right? We need to start dividing this time up into different categories. And each of those categories is a specific topic Okay, so one of them would be technique. One of them would be fingerboard knowledge. One of them would be harmonic analysis. One of them would be genres and application. One of them would be baseline creation. And we need to make sure that every single day that we are doing all of those, or not every single day, like five days a week, right? We need to be make sure that every time we pick up the bass, we're, we're doing all of the categories and we divide our practice time up like that. Now the kicker is that within each of these categories, all things aren't equal. We need to practice very specific things to get our bass playing to really push forward and get that forward momentum that we want. We don't, if you've been stuck in a rut or you're lacking focus or anything like that, you've been playing for like a year or two years or 10 years, and you feel like you're doing this and you're not getting any better, well, this program that I'm talking about, the link's down below, it's for you. So make sure you click it out. I'm gonna tell you much more about that. We're gonna talk about all the categories that are within this little thing, this pie. <laughs> okay, we'll talk about all the categories and we'll also talk about the 80-20 principle, okay? The 80-20 principle, which is all about getting rid of the 80% and working on the 20%. If it sounds like something you'd be into, Click the link below, it's called the Eight Week Practice Accelerator and hopefully you'll come and join in with me and we'll, uh, 
we'll have this eight week, eight week adventure together. Now, without further ado, as always, take it easy and I'll see you in the shed.